On Tuesday, MSNBC's Lawrence O'Donnell began his show with a major announcement that he had finally achieved what no journalist had been able to do for the last two and a half years, not even Robert Mueller. He learned that President Trump's tax returns directly connect him to Vladimir Putin. He was so proud of his exclusive that he bragged about it with Richard Maddow during the switchover from her show to his. And let's just say that even she was quite skeptical. And hmm. this single source close to Deutsche Bank has told me that the Trump, Donald Trump's loan documents there show that he has co-signers. That's how he was able to obtain those loans. And that the co-signers are Russian oligarchs. What? Really? That would explain, it seems to me, every kind word Donald Trump has ever said about Russia and Vladimir Putin, if true. Mr. O'Donnell continued with his improv theater, imagining an incredible story that kept his audience on the edge of their seats. The source says that Deutsche Bank is in possession of loan documents that show Donald Trump has obtained loans with co-signers, and that he would not have been able to obtain those loans without co-signers. The source close to Deutsche Bank says that the co-signers of Donald Trump's Deutsche Bank loans are Russian billionaires close to Vladimir Putin. Almost immediately, the hashtag Russian co-signers began trending on Twitter, and twits started tweeting things like, quote, the fact that Trump's Deutsche Bank loans are co-signed by Russian oligarchs just confirms everything we already know. The president of the United States is a compromised Russian asset and must be removed from office. So let's talk about the Deutsche Bank loans and the Russian co-signers. Trumpsters, can you explain why a billionaire needs a co-signer? World-renowned political genius Alyssa Milano said, Hey, Trump supporters, connect the dots for bleep's sake. We connected them, sweetie, but the dots were fake again. President Trump's lawyer then did what he probably should be doing a hundred times a day. He sent a cease and desist letter to MSNBC and demanded a retraction and an apology. Lord O'Donnell then became a laughingstock among those of us who still have a brain, as this NPC meme perfectly illustrates. If true, 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 Tucker, you've worked for print publications. That's the conversation you have with the city editor or the assignment yeah. desk. You yeah. don't go on live national TV and say, if true. <laughs> if true. That's my favorite. Yeah, I've never written a lead with that, with, that, with that phrase in it. Then last night he began his show the way that every show on MSNBC and CNN should begin, with an apology. Last night on this show, I did not go through the rigorous verification and standards process here at MSNBC before repeating what I heard from my source. Had it gone through that process, I would not have been permitted to report it. I should not have said it on air or posted it on Twitter. I was wrong to do so. This afternoon, attorneys for the president sent us a letter asserting the story is false. They also demanded a retraction. Tonight, we are retracting the story. I apologize. But this week was filled with all sorts of fun fake news. Axios, another one of these clickbait content farms, had an exclusive claiming that as Hurricane Dorian is making its way to our shores, President Trump suggested using a nuke to stop it, which apparently is the plot of Sharknado. <laughs> Since most news is online these days and fewer people are buying and reading physical newspapers, these companies need to just drive traffic to their websites by any means necessary. So they're just fabricating stories out of thin air, like the grocery store tabloids, hoping that people will share them on social media because they're so outrageous that they'll click on it and come to their sites. Meanwhile, Olive Garden has been spending all week replying to people on Twitter, trying to stop rumors from spreading that they supposedly were financing the Trump campaign after one unknown idiot tweeted out the false claim that they were, sparking all the twits on Twitter to become so outraged that the hashtag boycott Olive Garden began trending. In other news, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand from New York finally came to her senses after not qualifying for the next presidential primary debate and dropped out of the race. Our comedian in chief then took to Twitter to say, quote, a sad day for the Democrats. Kirsten Gillibrand just dropped out of the presidential primary. I'm glad they never found out that she was the one I was really afraid of. It's tweets like these that are gonna go down in history. And someday there's gonna be a book, like a coffee table book, 
of President Trump's funniest tweets. And in 20 or 30 years, we're going to get to flip through that book and relive this incredible moment in history. Speaking of books, I have a new one coming out in just over two months. It's not on President Trump's funniest tweets, although maybe I should start working on that. I'll tell you guys more about it as it gets closer to the release date in November, and it's going to be awesome. Hopefully we can get it to number one on Amazon.com and watch the liberal media really lose their mind. But I did just release my brand new Mount Trumpmore shirt, which you can get from my online store at MarkDice.com or click the link in the description below. And of course, you know by now, it is available in a t-shirt, long sleeve, and a hoodie, and a whole bunch of different colors as well. And your purchase helps keep this channel going and you get a great shirt. So head out over to MarkDice.com or click the link in the description below and check it out.